Hello and welcome, my name is Xander. I will be your instructor through this tutorial. Now this tutorial is actually part of a whole course which you can access the first stages for free here on YouTube. Now in this tutorial, I might mention resources and other tutorials. Do check out the link in the video description which will take you to the playlist and also there will be a link to the resources so that you can access and follow along here on YouTube. Now, if you like this course, you found it useful and you want to take that next step, you can find this course over at Udemy. All the links to the resources can be found in the video description. Now, don't forget also subscribe to the channel for weekly promotions, discounts and free course giveaways. Our primary method of interacting with the database in this course is with the terminal, but we were also exploring some of the features of PG Admin. So now that we have looked at managing inserting data into the database. Let's take a look at PG Admin and see what it offers in terms of administrating database data. In this tutorial, we're going to start PG Admin. We're going to take a look at the command line tools we have available to interact with our database and then take a look at the graphical user interface tools or the UI tools that we have to interact, create, delete, update data. Right, so that's the plan. So let's start off by selecting the right Docker Compose file. Uh, so let's go Docker Compose. Now, in actual fact, we do have the PG Admin folder here from the previous tutorial, potentially. So I'm going to delete that so that we don't utilize any of that information. We create a fresh copy of Postgres. Right, so Docker Compose. Right, so we're going to need the data in our container. So we're going to use the the Docker Compose with database data. We're going to use that. So Docker uh, Compose with, and it's going to be database, database data. There we go. Use up and then use the D flag. That should bring up our container, which will then include the bind mount so that we can access our database data in the container. Now, as you can see here, it looks like I may have made a mistake. So we have an error response, invalid mount config for bind, source path does not exist. Really? Okay. Because I've accidentally deleted the wrong folder. No, I haven't. Okay. So PG data was removed. So let's take a look at the with data. Um, it looks like we're okay. So I'm not entirely sure why that we received that error. So let's just make sure we have deleted the containers first. So let's go back into the containers. Let me just delete those containers. So let's try that command again. You may not have had a problem. So docker compose with data place data. And this time we're okay. So we had an existing container started and it looked like there was just some sort of conflict with trying to make those changes. So we now have everything started. So our database container will be able to access this folder or we'll have a copy of this data in the container for us to actually replicate and build the database. So in addition to that, you can see that this does also include PG admin. So we have already set up, we have now set up PG admin. We did learn that in the previous tutorial, but we will need to because we restarted Docker and we didn't specify a bind or volume for this. We will need to recreate the connection to our database. Right, so head over to your browser. You're going to need localhost colon 5050. That's going to be the, the address for this. So localhost colon and then 5050. So that should take you to the login page. And from there, we can log in. So you'll need to look at the Docker Compose file for the username and password, which should be aa.com and then the word password, password. So you can log in and then we need to create a new connection to our server. So give it a name, let's just call this Postgres. And then we need to build the connection. So we need the name of the database container so that's inventory db that's the name of our container and then we need to read the if we've forgotten the username and password 
for the user that we use to connect to the maintenance database called Postgres in our Postgres container. Right, so that should be done. We now logged in and we can now access the inventory database. Right, so we'll take a look at the tools first from the command line perspective, and then we'll take a look at the user interface, see what it provides in terms of helping us manage our data. So we don't have any tables at the moment. So what we're going to need to do is move over back to our code here, and we're just going to copy all these tables from the create all tables. I'm going to copy that, go back in, and first of all, right click on our database called inventory and use the query tool. So the query tool is like using the command prompt that we have been using uh, in Visual Studio Code. From here, we can write queries, statements to perform actions on our database. So here I'm going to paste in our table script, and then we're going to use this here, execute. So we're going to use execute script. There we go. And then that creates the table. So what we should have now, if we go into schemas, public schema, and then tables, we have now have the eight tables we've just created. So now we need some data. So let's go into our CSV file and we're going to grab all that there. We should have access to the, the files because remember this Docker Compose does that we're using does have the volume over to this folder. So let's go back into our query window. I'm going to paste that in. So we're going to run that. Okay, so we're told here that extra data after the last expected column. So it looks like we've potentially got an issue there. And that issue is right here because I've accidentally copied in that code as well. So we don't need that at the bottom there, apologies. So remember to admit that before you run. Let's try that again. And we now have a successful run. Right, so in terms of interacting with the database from a command prompt, that's pretty much um, what we have here in PG admin, we simply need to open up a new uh, query window, query tool window. So from the query tool, and you can see there are a few different options here from this list, what we can uh, utilize to build queries or help us build queries. And statements, if you use or look at some of the tools here, you can see there's a whole bunch of different tools to help us construct our queries and statements. So what this breaks down to is that everything that we have performed in the terminal in Visual Studio Code thus far in this module and all the modules thus far, we can perform that here in our query tool right here. So let's uh, select all from. Hmm. OK, so you can see the highlighting. What this provides is as we write our code, it will help us highlight errors in our SQL. So let's go for category. Let's run this and you can see that that then does return data. So this is where potentially it is quite useful in that we can now further inspect our data. And then from here, we can start now to talk about the user interface in terms of providing us direct tools to uh, make changes to our data. I think the reality is that much of the work that you do with your database will be performed with commands. And maybe in some scenarios, it can be useful to have this user interface to make quick changes to our data. So from this window, you can see that if I double click on the data here, I can make changes. So if I wanted to change um, any of this data, I can just simply press or double click on a cell, press OK, that would make the change. But what's important here is that you need to save the results afterwards. You simply can't expect it to be saved straight away. So you will need to uh, save. So you can see that you can save the results to file. So you may have seen that downloaded as a CSV file. So I now have access to all the data as a CSV file, which can be useful in some situations. So to actually change that, you need to make the change. And this option here, save data changes, make, it becomes available. And you can press save and you can see then that actually then saves the data to persist in your database. So that's how you're going to change uh, data here. So you can run both queries and then from the data output, you can then go ahead and make the changes as needed. Now, a more direct approach here, I just close that, is that if we move into the schema, 
and public in this case, we can directly access the data now in from the, the tables here. So I can right click, view and edit data, and I can then view the first hundred or filter or, or rows. So from here, I can see all the rows. I've got this option to look for different pages, uh, to look at all the data, depending on how much you've got. And then like you saw previously, we can then go ahead and make some changes here in the data by double clicking. Do that again. Okay. And then you can see it's highlighted. And then I just need to save the data changes to make it permanent. If we look at the top rhythm here, you can explore some of these different options. Uh, we can add rows. So we have some basic options here to add rows. Uh, so I can then go ahead and add some data. Uh, be careful where you add the rows, of course. So um, let's uh, select the, the end here, then press add. And you can see we've created now a new row at the end here. So we can go ahead and add some data in a manual way. So the general workflow, like I said, is that you would run a query to find the data. It would appear in the data output and then you can go ahead and make changes. So add, delete, update uh, data. So once you have finished editing, so here, for example, uh, let me just show you delete. So we've, we've looked at add, and we've looked at editing data. So deleting data, you simply need to select the row or rows you want to delete. I use the shift there to uh, select multiple. Oh, I don't need to, I don't think, actually. Uh, so we select multiple and then you just need to select the delete option here. Okay, so notice that we first identify what we want to delete, but then we always need to save the changes to actually uh, delete the data. And I've got an error here because of this field that we've created there. Uh, so let's just uh, delete these that we've selected. So we'll go for delete, save the changes, and we've still got an error because remember, this still will follow the foreign key constraint rules. Um, so it looks like we do have uh, related records, so we can't delete those in actual fact. So I will delete something. Let's go into the products table. And let's delete this option here at the end. So we selected it, press delete. That will then get highlighted for deletion. We can then save the changes. So in terms of inserts, updates, and deletes for PG Admin, that's the workflow generally. Uh, working with PG Admin, essentially you are going to be utilizing queries uh, to make changes. But if you want to make small changes to the data and it is easily accessible, you can see you can simply right click, access all the data and all the different pages, um, depending on how much data you have, of course. You can run different searches. That's pretty much what the query window is for, to run a search for a particular uh, record. And then you can easily make the changes, the small changes to that data. So that's really the fundamentals of inserting, updating and deleting data with PG Admin.